Hey, Foot Clan, if you ever stopped at a railway crossing and the signals are flashing and you don't see the train or it appears to be moving slow and you're thinking maybe you can sneak across those tracks before the train comes, think about this. Even if the engineer sees you and applies the brakes right away, it can take a train over a mile to stop. Over a mile. By that time, it's too late and the resulting crash will be deadly. A reminder, stop. Trains can't. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome one and all to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Excited to be with you. Now, I thought about mixing it up on the intro. Just, uh, I had a good play called, but I thought about bringing in maybe a little bit of a a gadget introduction. Maybe have Taysom Hill come in and do the intro today. (laughs) What do you guys think of that plan? You know, as you say it, I got excited and then I got disappointed. Okay. Now, first of all, I want to say I'm disappointed in using Taysom Hill. Just in general. Right. Just emotionally, I can't handle it anymore, and I hate that the last play worked because it just means they're going to stick with it. But more importantly, I thought what you meant was that it's football time. It was. It is football time, Mike. Oh, my and goodness. And Michael Wright, you have let us all down. I sincerely apologize to everyone. I, f- I totally forgot about TuesdayNightFootball.com. <laughs> and and I'm, look, I'm glad you brought it up. Let's let's just get it out of the way. With the I Taysom thought Hill maybe stuff. that's how we'd open things up yes. because the we, it, we need to talk about it. Jason, Mike, you both were this, uh, not happy. Like this is a we we stay politically free on this show. This yeah. is a absolute. This is a fun zone. It's a fantasy football show. Yes. The, look, we all have huge difference of opinions in this, especially in this world right now. But when I can jump on Twitter and I see how united the football landscape is in our push for stop using Taysom Hill in all of these dumb gadget plays it gives me hope for the future of America it's one thing to use Taysom Hill in dumb gadget plays when they don't matter but you want to know when they kept bringing him in every time it mattered (laughs) we need a big play oh it's third down oh it's third down games on the line you better get the Hall of Famer out. You better take Drew Brees out of the game. What are you doing? It's not like Drew Brees couldn't have also scored the touchdown there. Drew Brees sadly standing on the sideline on all those plays where the camera, of course, was affixed to him. It As was it just, should be. You just wonder what goes through his head like, oh, seriously, Sean, Sean, are you really doing this right now? Are you, what, huh? Look, I mean, he's, he, I mean, he's a, uh, you know, He's a good soldier. He'll he'll follow. He yeah. will say absolutely. Yes. I'm I I support the coach. Coach tells me to do something. I will do it. And I love that about Drew Brees. That's great. And I love Sean Payton. He's great. But there's something Taysom Hill has. Like, I don't know if it's a yeah. nephew situation, <laughs> and we just don't know the lineage of Taysom Hill from Sean Payton. But there is some adopted child. Yeah, issue like he is. <laughs> that Taysom Hill has over Sean. Payton. And I I even feel no, but like, guys, it worked. They won. Well, that's I, <laughs> I, I know that that Saints fans were were super happy about the the Taysom Hill rushing touchdown, but I feel like even the Saints fans that I'm connected with on Twitter are like, please stop, please stop doing it. If you want to put him in at running back, tight end, wide receiver, if you want to run an occasional end around where he ends up chucking it instead of uh, you know it, running it, cool. You want to bring him in at quarterback on third and important, right? Uh, it, that is that is a frightening. And the, yes, sign. I get it. The, uh, we are he Peyton sees the uh, the end result. Oh, justified of using Taysom Hill. Imagine you did not have all those negative results from those big p- important plays from Taysom Hill earlier. Perhaps your team is up fourteen points instead of trying to tie the game at the very end. Up fourteen, you could put him in the quarterback. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, sure, that's great. That's great. Get up fourteen, and then then uh, put and then in. blow the lead. <laughs> now, is it a bit of a catch twenty two? So this is the Taysom Hill podcast. In case you were wondering, 
Uh, is it a catch twenty two that they paid him all that money, so now they feel like they have to use him in those, even yes. though they're not working? Oh, absolutely. Yes. That's the equivalent of the fantasy football uh, pot committed on the drafted player, right? Yes. You draft somebody that's supposed to be great. Yes, it is. And Don't then you like start you... Kenyon Drake every week. <laughs> exactly. All right, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers if you want to watch the show. If you are watching right now, you would see that Mike has come into our beautiful set and he has knocked over the Keenan Allen uh, figurine on the desk in rebellion to what happened last night, being knocked out early after oh. a great start. I do not hold Keenan Allen responsible. Like, the man <laughs> it got seems hurt. It's like you might a well, little no, bit. No, no, look. He got hurt. It, I get it. You know, players get hurt. It just, it was, Fugland, you want to talk about a bad beat of this week in fantasy football. Andy will be the highest scoring team in our league of record. Uh, I don't know if I hit second or third. Pretty, I think you did hit second. Uh, but I had Dalvin Cook on Monday, yeah. and I had Keenan Allen, or uh, Dalvin Cook Sunday night, Keenan Allen Monday, and I it was a, a lead that seemed impossible for me to come back until halfway through Sunday night when Dalvin Cook was just manhandling the Seattle Seahawks, uh, and then it was, okay, he gets injured. I still at least have a shot if Keenan Allen goes out and has a great game. First quarter touchdown. Holy crap, this is going to... Nope. Nope. We, yeah, we're done. We're done. So two injuries. I noticed took you me disappeared out. from Slack for quite a while after that injury, Mike. Yeah, it 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 hurt. Needed a it, moment. It, it hurt a lot. I, I had my own back spasms after that. Right. <laughs> Sympathetic? Yes. All right. Twitter at the FF Ballers. Get better, Keenan. Today's a waiver show on the same day that we have a Tuesday night football.com game. And uh so that's kind of interesting. That's kind of different. But you can get your waiver claims in um, from what I've seen on platforms. I mean, you, you kind of treat it like a normal Wednesday waiver day. Mm -hmm. But you do have the interesting game tonight, which no new tests. We're going to have a football game. That is very exciting. I, I do say, though, we can't move on from this game without talking. So we, we got to yeah, sure. we, we shower some praises here Okay, on first-round pick Justin Herbert. Yeah. That dude was balling out. Him – Mike Williams, they uh, like, I mean, to lose by three points to the Saints on the road. He had the with, fresh time. He had you the You dropped the H off his name. Yes. He, he was Us, out there. Austin Herbert. <laughs> you dropped the H, and he. Uh, you were right on this call. I mean, you said that you thought Justin Herbert would have a great game. I saw it going more the direction of the Joe Burrow situation against Baltimore, where it's like the moment's too big for you against a team like – the Saints, but the Saints really are – they've been vulnerable. They're beatable in the second. And that's really what you focused on when you said, hey, yeah. maybe Herbert has a great game. And he had it in spite of losing Keenan Allen. He had it with the greatest contested catch player maybe that exists in the game today, Mike Williams, although he is always hurt because of the way he approaches the that's, game. That's he true. He needs to learn how to land on his feet. Impossible. That, like he go Get this man a kitty cat. He was he was apparently a high jumper in high school. He learned how to do that like oh, back, the flop. The you know he jumps up, yeah. gets higher than everybody. I believe and it. Lands on his back, expecting a big pillow. <laughs> he's incre He's an incredible player. He's so good. He is so good. But uh, and then Jason has had a knack for picking tight ends that end up in the end zone because he keeps picking them against the Saints. Yeah, it's a delightful process. <laughs> so I feel bad for the Chargers. Here's what I'm worried. This is going to be the stamp of doom, but. I like Anthony Lynn. I think he's a good head coach. I said that about some other head coaches. Yeah. I am worried I that like these, the man, Anthony Lynn. I worry that the close losses are going to, you know, he's not going to be around to enjoy this future for Justin Herbert, who seems to me the closest thing to the Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes arm that we have outside of those two players right now. Yeah, he's, he has a cannon. I mean, it's it's one of those things where, like, Drew Brees is great. Drew Brees is old. Drew Brees likes the ball underneath. And Drew Brees is not going to roll to his left and throw across his body on a laser beam. And Justin Herbert can do that kind of stuff. There was a play where uh, Justin Herbert got hit. His arm got hit, so he did, he wasn't even able to complete the full motion of a, a pass. I think that went 40 or 50 air yards. It was incredible. And he barely underthrew it with his arm getting hit. It was unbelievable. Disappointing game. Uh for Joshua Kelly, fantasy mm -hmm. football players who – Yes. Who, managers who expected more from him. Honestly, it's gotten worse and worse every week for Joshua Kelly. 
He looks bad. He looks bad. And Justin Jackson, uh, conversely, looks good. Yeah, well, Jackson's numbers are a bit inflated. 15 for 71 for Justin Jackson on the ground, 11 for 29 for Joshua Kelly. The The running plays were infuriating last night because they were just running in, into a brick wall over and over. Jackson's numbers are a bit inflated because he had a 36-yard run. on. I think it was on a draw, and – it, it was it was a great run by Jackson, not taking it away from him. But this was my uh, – when we were on the waiver show last week talking about Dearness Johnson versus Justin Jackson, it was, I know Justin Jackson has a role. I, I did not expect Justin Jackson to come out and out-touch Joshua Kelly, but that's where we are moving forward. Yeah, and uh, that's a big deal for fantasy players. Especially that, in the passing game. Yeah, five catches for Justin Jackson – so it was an interesting game. We got another one tonight. You guys want to talk some news? Yep. News and notes from around the league. All right, no new positives for the Titans. That's the big news today, which means we'll have a game. A.J. Brown is questionable. That's his uh, designation. He did have a full practice on Saturday. He's going to be into this in this game. Right. Um, well, we're not going to have Corey Davis, right? He's on the COVID Correct. list. Correct. So. Or Adam Humphreys. Right, so John, uh, Joni Smith, mm -hmm. AJ Brown, and I am very curious how rusty the Titans yeah. appear tonight. Um, it's a difficult matchup with Buffalo. They they can throw some different things at you. We haven't seen uh, this is week five. AJ Brown hasn't had a, an impact on the twenty twenty fantasy season yet. Sure. It, this could be his first chance. The nice thing about having rust is the game plan for the Titans will be give the ball to Derrick Henry. Yeah. Uh, Dalvin Cook is reportedly not expected to play on uh, Sunday's Week 6 matchup. He's got a bye after this week. It's an adductor strain. Ah, my yeah. adductor. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, he should be back after that. So that is the good news. Is Yes, he he, dev he should be. The The verbiage was we will reevaluate him after the bye week. So it's very, it's very optimistic about it, but you also do need – be preparing just in case he's not back. Wasn't there? It wasn't Mike Zimmer. Somebody said that he was fine after the game. Yeah, they they said that it was it was minor. I believe yeah. is, is what they said. I it, think this is best case for Cook managers. Actually, yes. give him the two weeks. Absolutely, you've got one week of Alexander Madison, which should be a great pickup. We'll talk about shortly. Mm -hmm. Then a bye week, and then Cook is back. Keenan Allen with the back spasms. Uh, no real concerns from our injury expert Matthew Betts, but he did miss the remainder of the game. Uh, the, Matt, time, the bye week is timed up for the Chargers pretty well here. Yeah, Matt Rule um, said he will make a decision on Christian McCaffrey's week six status after tests on the ankle. It was a four- to six-week injury. If he came back, it would be right at the four-week mark, and uh, he's not expecting it. He When he talks about this, when you saw an interview yesterday, he said, yeah, there's probably no way he's back this week. So keep playing Mike Davis. Yes, he's also the quote on Mike Davis. They said, uh, Matt Ja Rule, what do you think of Mike Davis' performance so far, and he's like, oh, murder. Yeah, he's, he's right. He's right, and well said. Well <laughs> said. Um, any other news that uh, Sammy Watkins is going to miss a couple of weeks? That that does impact the wide receiver pickups of the week. Sure, absolutely, which we're going to get into right now. Yep. Put me in, coach. All right, returning from the bye, the Lions and the Packers, and then the Broncos and the Patriots, who had a, an, an impromptu bye, as we call it in 2020. Mm -hmm. Week six bye weeks, Raiders, Saints, Seahawks, Chargers. Great, the Chargers get to sit in that close loss for another week. Mm -hmm. that's, that's tough. All right, here are some uh, drop candidates. Whenever we do our waiver show, we like to bring up some names that uh, we see frequently on Twitter, Instagram, Players that uh, someone's wondering, maybe if I go after a waiver wire pickup, these are the guys I got to let go. Russell Gage. I think you can let him go. Gage, yeah. Gage is droppable for these first couple players we're going to talk about, yes. Michael Gallup. That's a, <sighs> one of the toughest players this yeah, year. Yes, really like, interesting because he has been involved. He's a player we have recommended not dropping because he's been in a great offense with a bad defense, and he's had a couple good games. But now with the kind of – middling performance he's given you adding in Andy Dalton you go can you trust him and if Michael Gallup were on waivers 
he would be someone I would be looking to pick up, but not necessarily first in priority over some of the other guys we're about to talk about. Yeah, he feels like he should be rostered. Uh, mm -hmm. Through five weeks, he has uh, one nice week, week three. He was the seventh overall wide receiver that week. And then uh, pretty much nothing good. The, the hard part for Michael Gallup is you don't know now what's Andy Dalton going to do as the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. What are his tendencies? I mean, that's that's why we were talking about you. You There's some concern here for Dalton Schultz. Will Dalton use, utilize that the tight end position the way that Dak Prescott did? Who, who is Andy Dalton going to favor? And Michael Gallup did see three targets from – Andy Dalton, it's he's not a player I'm dropping right now. What's nice about Dalton as the backup is this is not a situation where you're bringing in somebody that's going to be afraid to challenge down the field. Dalton has an extensive career. He's done it before. It doesn't mean he's going to be good at it, but he's not going to be afraid. Sometimes you bring in a game manager that's just going to hand the ball off to Zeke. At least Dalton has a little bit of ceiling in yeah, this yeah. situation. So if he, if he takes a liking to Michael Gallup, maybe it means something. Sure. Deontay Johnson, no way you're dropping Deontay no, Johnson. No, he's just he unfortunately been hurt. Uh, I don't think that there are a lot of uh, players in the wide receiver realm that I'd be dropping You know, Gallup for of this group. Chase Claypool is the big name of the week mm -hmm. at the wide receiver position. He had the breakout performance, three touchdowns. When you look at the – Four, technically, if you count the rushing touchdowns. I do count the rushing <laughs> touchdowns. That's right. Yes, fantasy four, points, four in fact, touchdowns. count them. Yeah, we, we were looking up all the players that had four touchdown games at wide receiver. And, of course, Jerry Rice had a 218-yard, had a five-touchdown game of course in, his, he did. in his career. But Claypool, um, he came out. He balled out. He didn't run as many routes as James Washington or Juju Smith-Schuster. Deontay Johnson was hurt. Those are kind of your temper expectations bullet points for Chase Claypool. Now – this week, he has Cleveland. That's a great matchup for fantasy wide receivers. Let me ask you this. What are you investing in Chase Claypool in terms of fab and blowing your waiver priority? And then are you willing to instantly start him chasing last week? I am willing to instantly start him as far as a the, the if you have the number one waiver priority, if your, your league is in that, and Madison is there. I get it. It's maybe it's only one game of Madison. That still would be the move I would make. If if Madison is not on the waiver wire, then Claypool would be my number one claim. I would be willing to break my waiver priority for it in terms of Fab. You know, at least fifteen plus percent here. I believe in Chase Claypool, the player. This is it's it's interesting. You know, because every every year you have these random games. Um, uh, Ogletree. I'm, it, Ogletree is from the D Dallas Cowboys years ago. That's kind of always the reference point. Week one, uh, Ogletree comes out, has a three touchdown game. What do you do with that? You you mark that as that's a one off because that's not who he was designed to be for this team. Chase Clu Claypool was a second round pick for a team that is preparing to get rid of or not get rid of, but not retain the services of Juju Smith Schuster. So if you're the Steelers, how do you? How do you go backwards from when Chase Claypool has shown you exactly what he can do, the impact he can make on a game as a rookie? How do you not unleash him? But and, that, and and why? Why do you go backwards? You, right, you shouldn't. That's and, what I mean. But but that's also then buying into we we warn about <laughs> believing in the the rational coaching fallacy of these coaches don't always do what you think is the right thing to do. I yeah, and and that's that's true. But Mike Tomlin is a Really proven, known commodity, a great uh, procurer of putting talent in the right positions to do what they do best, and so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna believe in Chase Claypool this week. I know Deontay Johnson went down with a back injury, and so some of the snaps are probably skewed a little bit. Some of the targets are skewed. Deontay Johnson probably would have led the team in targets, and that would have taken sure. away from the hundred yards that that Claypool got. But prior to the injury. This was Chase Claypool's first start. They put him into the starting lineup. Yes. So he was part a of, the, part plan. of yeah. the plan. They were drawing up plays for him. The talent is there. He's proven he can do it. He looks great. So, yeah, I, I agree. Chase Claypool's the number one wide receiver pickup of the week. And I, I think, you know, I don't know if I'm willing to pay enough because of the De Deontay Johnson. Um, I'm probably 15% of my budget. I'm uh, more. 
I'm more. I, I regretted not spending up on Justin Jefferson, somebody I believe has staying power in that offense. And uh, you make a great point with him. This was his first start. Now, Deontay Johnson, I, I was reading about him this morning. He's going to be back. He's going to be back. It was not considered a major injury. But Claypool, uh, I think he's somebody that you want to take your shot on because if he is this special player, mm -hmm. you can win a league with him. This is not a one-week rental situation, uh, but you can start him right away against Cleveland. So I, I would go 25% All right. or more, maybe All 30. Right. I'm going to go to 30. I like Can it. I get 35? Uh, look, I I do not blame you. And if, you know, athletic profiles can be overrated. But it you need to understand if if you're not familiar with Chase Claypool, let's say you're you're not the, a dynasty player, so you've already you know it's a new name for you. Right. He he's new to you. Chase Claypool is 6'4", 240 pounds and ran a 442. <laughs> like his his if you go look on the the fantasyfootballers.com Look at his athletic profile, or his player profile, I should say. His athleticism score as a 6'4", 240-pound man is 96 out of 100. This dude, Mapletron, is an absolute machine. He's a beast, man. Yeah, He's when you can run like that, you can play the Martavis Bryant deep route role, but then right. you can be involved in things like these. I mean, he got rushing attempts multiple times in this game. He's very, very interesting moving forward. And, Agreed. and this was a... You don't put up four touchdowns. This doesn't happen uh, occasionally to a nobody. Right. right. This was the perfect timing of the the talent was there. He just needed the opportunity to come to to have his breakout moment. It came sooner than I thought it was going to. I thought Claypool was a longer term type of a player for the Steelers, but he he uh, he took it to one hundred. Yeah, and he uh, he did it against me in Dynasty. That you might say spectacular. I don't appreciate the rushing usage though. James Conner was on the goal <laughs> line, and I could have used that touchdown chase. You had enough. Uh, but speaking of taking it to one hundred, this episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head and Shoulders, available at Walmart. This year, we're doing a new segment every Thursday. We are going to be picking our up to one hundred players of the week. Last week, Andy, and, and if you're new to the show, we're trying to pick players who, like, these aren't top 24, just, you you know, they're a locked and loaded starter. You have some questions. Andy went with LaVisca Chenault, wide receiver from the Jacksonville Jaguars. And this, I man, count it. Oh, no, oh, I'm yeah, saying this sure. man absolutely took it to 100. He was the leading receiver on the team. He was well worth the, the start. I imagine we're talking about him. In the waiver section here. If we're not, we need to get him in there. Uh, Jason went with Darius Slayton, who whew, took it to 100. He took it that yards was a great, receiving. Was a great game. Great he game. absolutely did. And I was with Eric Ebron, who was on his way until he fumbled the opportunity away. Twice. Oh, Eric Ebron. Yeah. Well, and, one was an official fumble. Yeah. The other one was... It was probably a fumble. And then the Steelers were like, man, do we have anyone else 6'4 that can get <laughs> touchdowns? Oh, Chase, Chase Claypool, why don't you have four touchdowns? Uh, so, Foot Clan, take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out this Thursday's episode to hear our up to 100 picks of the week. And Foot Clan, we want to thank HelloFresh, longtime great sponsor. I mean, they, they sponsor so many of my dinners, and that's really <laughs> important to me. It's one of the most important things in my life. You can get dinner fresh sponsorship. dinner. Well, just dinner in general. I, real, I do it every day. I highly recommend you eat dinner as well. And do it with HelloFresh because you can get fresh pre-measured ingredients, mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip the grocery store. Uh, you know, I mean, everything about HelloFresh is great. You, you've you got a carbon footprint that's 25% lower than store-bought grocery-made meals. They offer delicious options for everybody, whether you want a low-calorie or vegetarian or kid-friendly. Just check it out. They are fantastic. Simple steps, easy to make. You will love having these done for you. I love the variety in my dinners. Go to HelloFresh.com slash fantasy 80 and use the code fantasy 80 to get a total of $80 off across five boxes, including free shipping on your first box. That's hellofresh.com slash fantasy 80 and code fantasy 80 for $80 off across five boxes, including free shipping on your first box. Additional restrictions apply. Please visit hellofresh.com for more details. All right. There are a lot of other wide receiver names that maybe we have uh, similar opinions on, maybe some different ones. Uh, you know, Mike, you brought up the fact that Watkins is going to be out for a little while. McCall Hardman looks a little bit more interesting. Yes, he does. Um, 
also Travis Fulgham yes. had the breakout game for the Eagles this past week. And when I say breakout, I, I mean it. It's 10 for 152 and 1. This is a player that is 6'3", 215, has been dumped by multiple teams, the, the Lions, the Packers, um, even the Eagles before they brought him back. He had his shot and he took advantage and he's not rostered in any league right now. Yeah, but the thing, the thing about Travis Fulgham for the Philadelphia Eagles, like when Carson Wentz is looking at his options of who's down the field, he's got Zach Ertz there. And so <laughs> Travis Fulgham just looks like an absolute superstar talent. Do you believe in this past week's breakout against Pittsburgh to the degree that you are wanting to put him on your redraft roster? I personally have concerns I, I i i believe in uh the fact that he can get it done and that they need someone to get it done so if you if you need a shot you can't argue with 13 targets 10 receptions and 150 yards what and i can argue with is he also he had the big touchdown two weeks ago as well against san francisco right the the issue i have is that this upcoming week is against baltimore i don't think i would start him this week i i don't i don't have the fortitude to pick up travis fulgham and start him in this matchup. That's not to say he can't perform. It's just the the odds say he won't. Right. And then you start to go, okay, at what point do Alshon Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson come back? Are, are they both back in two weeks? And if they're back, are you starting Travis Fulgham? I don't have the fortitude to start him over a roster that has uh, pass catchers. Um, now, What about as a dynasty ad? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. So you see him having a role in this offense potentially in the future. Yeah, right. the, the potential is there. He came through. He had the big week. I'm, I'm with Jason where I want to add Fulgham in, in redraft. I just don't know what the actual status of Deshaun Jackson and Alshon Jeffrey are moving forward. I know, I know that it's, it's, you know, it's fun to joke around about those guys are perma-injured because they kind of are, but Alshon Jeffrey has been participating in practices. He's just not to the point of where he's ready to get back on the field. But for, I, I believe that Carson Wentz, can, he can get the job done as at the quarterback position and he needs a weapon to do it. And right now, Travis Fulgham is looking like the only guy on the team to do it. I want to add the rookies this week. That's sure. what I want to do. I want to add. Uh, it's about time, yeah. I, I don't want the second fiddle options. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders, yeah, he had a great game. Right. I, I'm not that excited about him. He's on bye, and Michael Thomas will be back. Preston Williams, no, I'm not buying yeah. one week of Williams. Christian Kirk, no, I'm not buying the second fiddle player for Arizona. Who do I want? I want Henry Ruggs. I want LaVisca Chenault. T. Higgins. I want T. Higgins, who's, look, whatever happened to A.J. Green in that game, Oof. It went from bad to worse, Oof. and he could be traded. He could be released. He could be benched. He could. Here's what we do know: he'll be he'll be irrelevant. Yeah. And so T. Higgins is somebody that throw last week away in terms of Joe Burrow's week. Higgins still had four for sixty two. He still had eight targets, and led the led the wide receivers in snaps again. Yeah, and AJ Green did technically have an injury to his ego and uh, his hamstring. So those are the players that I am, yeah, that I am interested in, along with Mike Williams. Mike Williams, after last night, he could be a player that is ignored in terms of fab uh, dollars this week yeah, because, because of, the, of the bye week. Mm -hmm. So you could end up picking him up now, or you could wait. My, Maybe you take your shot on the rookies. I yeah, I mean, uh, with with you know, compare Higgins, who I really like. We've been uh, talking him up for a while with Mike Williams. I don't think you're going to want to start either of these guys this week. Mike Williams certainly not. He's on bye. But uh, it's an Indianapolis matchup for T. Higgins. I don't think you're going to be confident there. Mike Williams, I remember early in the game watching Justin Herbert uh, just – I forget uh, I forget the wide receiver that he, he slightly overthrew, but he has such a good-looking deep ball, and I kept thinking early. I, right off the bat in that game, I thought to myself, I need to go trade for Mike Williams in our leagues. I know he's rostered in all the leagues I'm playing in. I need to go trade for him. So if he's on waivers, yes, I am absolute. He has the skill set that matches up with the deep ball of Justin Herbert. That's going to be a, a, a beautiful thing. I think for a, for a long time. So he's there um, outside of the Chase Claypool or Mike Williams. Who would you be prioritizing? Uh, I, you know, 
because of the bye week, probably Chase Claypool. Okay. Uh, the upside is there, but um, I, I do see Mike Williams on that level, like as as high as any other wide receiver out here. You're going to have to invest a lot less on Mike Williams fab-wise than you will on Claypool. That's awesome. And uh, it, for context, the schedule for Mike Williams, yeah, the bye week, but Jacksonville plus matchup, Denver plus matchup, Las Vegas Raiders plus matchup. I, the, the Chargers are set up here after they get out of the bye week. Yeah, I think there's a lot of good wide receivers to pick up. I think last week was a little uh, empty. This week has has filled the tank. Another player that is high on my list. I really want to uh, pick up Mikko Hardman. I sure. think, you know, you Sammy Watkins is missing multiple weeks here. And this is a clear-cut second fiddle, really a third fiddle, because you've got Tyreek Hill a lot of and, and Travis Kelsey. <laughs> Uh, there's only so many fiddles that could be in a band, Jason. But you can have three <laughs> if the band. I don't know. It's usually one. Is the who is, is the conductor Dr. yellow card? Is the conductor of the orchestra Pat Mahomes? Because then he he loves them fiddles. He'll get fiddle, he'll get a cello in there. He'll get every. Jason goes to a lot of three fiddle orchestras. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because orchestras are where the fiddle really yeah, makes its home, especially when you go to the like a real renowned orchestra yes. and you say oh i see you play the fiddle yep. three of them and then the violin is stabs you in the eye with a bow <laughs> <laughs> my point is uh Call McCall hardman we we saw you know last year as a rookie he got off to a really strong start for fantasy when uh tyree kill was out and i i said early on in the season he's someone that can play his way into more snaps more usage or an injury to someone ahead of him and we have it now with sammy Watkins out of the way Brandon Cooks would be another name you could bring up. I mean, he's a player that you can take a shot on any week because he is a starting wide receiver while healthy for the Texans. Had a great week last week. It's really, really difficult for me personally to trust Brandon Cooks because I get it. Uh, it seems to be very hit and miss. Like, I don't know why he disappeared the week before to have uh, no catches, but apparently he is not done, mm -hmm. not retired. So another player you could look at. At the running back position, let's shift gears now. Some of the top drop candidates brought up on Twitter and Instagram, they're very interesting names. Because if you're going to go out and make a splash, you want to pick up Alexander Madison, you need a start against Atlanta. Great matchup. This week, it is Madison. Are you going to drop Jerry McKinnon? I certainly would. For Madison, I would, yes. Uh, yeah, I would not straight up drop Jerick McKinnon. Um, I, th I think that that game was... Like I said, uh, just they got punched in the mouth, thirty something to to seven at halftime. They bench their quarterback. McKinnon is an injury prone player, and they basically don't use him. Um, you know this this reminds me of of the Daryl Henderson game where he said he was sore, he was hurting, he was tired, and then all of a sudden the next game they don't use him. You come back the following game, and he's the guy. So I, I'm not. I would drop him for Alexander Madison if would I you, need to start a hundred percent. Would you drop him? You're not going to get a start from him, but would you drop him for Justin Jackson from I, the Chargers? Man, I wish we had more clarity on Austin Eckler's injury. Um, oh, Eckler's going to be out for a while. Yeah, I mean the the if it's if it's six weeks and you've got a bye week in there, I I think I would prefer to have McKinnon. But okay. it, w what about you two? I would, I rather, would rather Jackson. Yeah, likewise. I think we had that exact question before the weekend too, we? and I yeah we did hmm. uh, on Thursday or Friday, and and. We both went the Jackson route because I think we were higher on him. Ingram Dobbins, what do you do here? Again, this is a time of year. Mike, when we were talking before the season, one of our top 10 tips and tricks is to approach the season in these different chunks, right? Mm -hmm. You need to buy weeks sometimes, which means making a sacrifice on what you hope a player can become right. to get yourself a victory. The bye weeks are here. So between bye weeks and must-have wins, does that change the equation for what you do with Ingram and Dobbins? Because yeah. I think I'm I'm willing to move on from Ingram personally. They are, they they're still upside bench players. It's the exact same thing of like, did you have Madison sitting on a bench? I mean, if hopefully if you draft a Dalvin Cook, there we we talk about it, we don't draft insurance backup running backs, but Dalvin Cook, 100 percent of the places I drafted him, I prioritized Alexander Madison. So hopefully. The forty percent of leagues is that those are foot claim members out there who drafted Madison for this uh, case. That's what Mark Ingram and J.K. Dobbins are, though. Where if there is an injury to that backfield, and we are seeing injuries aplenty this year, 
like let's say uh, Mark Ingram, we see him go down and he's going to miss a few weeks or he wins a, a luxury vacation. He's not going to be there for a while. You know who the number one ad next week is? It is J.K. Dobbins. So that's you're just trying to stay ahead of the curve, but it does cost you some roster equity. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like that's true, but I don't know that the reverse is true. If J.K. Dobbins goes down, is Mark Ingram this... Makes you, no difference. Yeah, and so to me, Mark Ingram, who has not been good, but has a big name, has had a couple of touchdowns, I wonder if he's someone you could package, trade, you know, just... Possible. Try that's to, a better strategy. Try to take him, add him to another player, and slightly upgrade that other player, as opposed to dropping him, then you get to pick up a waiver option and, and upgrade your roster. Yeah, because running backs are hard to come by, and you can start Mark Ingram yes. in, yeah, in yeah, a pinch. You can. you can always ask yourself the question in reverse. If Mark Ingram's on waivers in your league, do you pick him up? I, I do. I would, yeah. Now, if you need to get a victory this week, are you dropping Mark Ingram to get Alexander Madison? Yes, 100%. Alexander Madison this week, it things... Things can go the south in, in really, really fast in fantasy football. But on paper, Alexander Madison will be treated very similar to Dalvin Cook. He won't be Dalvin Cook. But Madison is a great player. He was a third-round pick just two years ago, and he is playing the Atlanta Falcons. This is, this is an unbelievable matchup for the Minnesota Vikings and Alexander Madison for a one-week rental. This is buying a win. To me, if you can get Madison into your lineup. And that is the interesting thing about this pickup because we know that Alvin Cook, we know two things. We know one, Madison's going to be on by next week. So if you pick him up for this week, you don't get to play him next week. Correct. And then Dalvin Cook, by all, he I would be, be shocked if he, he wasn't be back. back after that against Green Bay. So you really are investing in a one week win. So if it's me, this is not a player that I'm putting a few dollars out there for. I'm either going hard after Alexander Madison to win this week or I am 100% out. If I don't need to start a running back this week, or if I've got somebody similar and I don't want to blow most, he's going to cost a lot of fab this week. What if you have Dalvin Cook? Oh. If I have Dalvin Cook, then I it mean, is a, a monstrous investment that I'm making now as a penalty for not making it earlier. That's right. That's right. I mean, you 60 70% of your budget if you need to. If I'm if I'm the Dalvin Cook uh, manager, I, I will do whatever it takes to get him. And and likewise, if you aren't and you and you invest in Madison, I, I fully expect because of this injury and what Madison should do this coming week, you're going to be able to then not just drop him, but trade him to the uh, the, yes. the cook manager who's going, man, I really need to have him on my roster as protection going forward. And, and so you're getting Madison plus trade capital. That's on your to-do list for the bye week following this week. After Madison exploits the Falcons defense, you go... Mm -hmm. Uh, you got a week to trade Madison to the to the Cook uh, manager. Mm -hmm. All right, other running backs. Uh, obviously, Madison taking up a big portion of our time. But Justin Jackson, if he's still out there, again the bye week coming up, maybe he's a little bit cheaper. Uh, Damian Harris. Yep. Coming off of this impromptu bye week, another player that maybe is ignored, uh, maybe not paid attention to. Now I don't know if you guys know the the answer because uh, I unfortunately do not. I'm just thinking of it now for Sony Michelle who was placed on the short-term IR, does the bye week count toward those three missing weeks? I think it yeah. does. Yeah. Okay. It's not a game. It's a week. Yeah. So so in that case, it's a little unfortunate that Harris didn't get more time to... to Yeah, to establish... Um, look, Sony Michelle will be out, and this matchup against Denver, it's fine. Yeah, Damian Harris is startable this week. Well, and you also... You, you get the, the disadvantage of him not getting that extra week without Sony, but you get the advantage of... You know, if you are grabbing Damian Harris, and let's just say he he gains the role rest of season and, and establishes himself, regardless of Sony, then he's passes by. That's true. I don't have a lot of interest outside of those names on the running back list. I mean, no, I agree. Tony, keep, I would start looking at the insurance guys, the Tony Pollard, yes, it is the and time. Latavius Murray. Those that we we saw it with Alexander Madison. Those are the players that you need to check your waivers for, see if they're out there, and and pick those guys up over getting a start out of Adrian Peterson. Yeah, yeah, I was I was able to grab Devonta Freeman the moment that Saquon went down mm -hmm. ahead of time. And if you have one of these guys on your bench before the injury, um, you know, I would prioritize if I'm putting them in order, I would go Latavius Murray one 
uh, and that's based on the injury history. I don't know if Ezekiel Elliott can be hurt. I don't know if he <laughs> – I don't think he can be concussed. I genuinely do not believe he has the capability of being concussed because uh, he has – he's got a helmet on a helmet. You know what I mean? That's a double helmet situation. I – you guys I have a agree very large head. So completely with you, Andy, that I feel like Tony Pollard is the most valuable insurance option that you will never, ever, ever be able to use. It's it, like a it ten million way. dollar policy, but it's on the healthiest man that's ever existed. It's a life insurance policy. You're not going to see it, right? Yeah, because what? Uh, Someone else is going to. Zeke get went it. through COVID, and then COVID was out indefinitely. Yeah, that's after, right. After after going through it. Um, yeah, otherwise Brian Hill, okay. The Gurley injury. Am I am I even thrilled about Brian Hill with, when Gurley goes down? You're I'm not thrilled. really thrilled. You're not thrilled about it, but you are thrilled that you have a, a running back who will see a lot of opportunity. That's true. Um otherwise, if you need a spot start at running back this week, Adrian Peterson is a spot start against Jacksonville. Sure. Uh because he will get work and that is Ob objective one at the running back position. Mm -hmm. See Jarek McKinnon this past week. Work is worth more than no work. Um, tight end position. This one's tougher because if you don't have one of the big three, and I'm talking about Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller, Mark Andrews. Oh, George Kittle's so angry. And with George you. and George Kittle. I apologize. Thank you. Uh, he's not in the top rankings because he just hasn't have enough games. But Kittle's in that group. But if you don't have one of them, it's been very very shaky mm -hmm. because he. he you can do the ping pong game of, ooh, I'm going to grab this guy this week because he had a good week last week. Oh, no, wait, crap, he had a bad week. I'm going to go to this guy this week because he had a good week last week, and that would have really hurt you. Um, drop candidates are relative to who you can pick up. Mm -hmm. So there is no absolute here. I'm not telling everybody, go drop Tyler Higby or Hayden Hurst or, for goodness sake, Zach Ertz. It's all about what you can pick up. Now, the bigger question mark to me is, it's Robert Tanyan and what you believe about the tight end position in Green Bay. If Robert Tanyan is real, not a fabrication, mm -hmm. not a a ghost, if he's real, do you drop those any of those three players to pick him up? The hard part about him being real is you won't know yet. I mean, you, it, is it Devontae Adams? Devontae Adams has been missing, and Robert Tanyan was there. Look, opportunity was there. The talent came through for Robert Tanya to to clean up tight end four, tight end two were his weekly finishes. But Devontae Adams, who is an absolute target vacuum, was not there. So you can't say with 100% certainty, yes, I'm dropping Zach Ertz for Robert Tanya and I'm riding that out. I, I lean that way. Trust me, I lean that way of I don't want to play Zach Ertz and I'd rather take my shot on Robert Tanya, but it is not guaranteed by any stretch. Now, Mike, let me put you on the spot here because you All right. This is this is a Mike Wright special. You have brought up players in the past that you have targeted and said they're a landmine <laughs> and that you should drop them because right. other people will pick sure. them up and play them. Yeah. In in our main league, why aren't you dropping Ertz if you believe he's washed? Because other your opponents will play him. Yes, the thing that, and also to be clear, <laughs> to be very, very clear, your opponents will play him is a way of saying I will sign him, Mike, and I will play him. I I know, I know that Zach Harris will be played. It was I wanted to go one more week. I wanted to see another week of evidence of please, please prove me wrong, Zach Ertz, and he's just he. I'm not dropping Zach Ertz. Not with not with the 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 way that the tight end position is right now. Maybe he was banged up and now he's healthier. I I don't know. I have no idea what's going on with Zach Ertz. I just Please. have I have to. Please. Yes, I need some. I need to look in the mirror with some self affirmation here on Zach Ertz. But like, I'm not dropping. I'm not dropping him for Logan Thomas. I'm not dropping him. For I tell you somebody Eric I will Ebron. drop him for a player that I I I am rising on. Is that Hooper? It is. It's Austin Hooper. From the Cleveland Browns. Absolutely. And uh, he was 5 for 57 on 10 targets last week. I've watched a lot of Browns football this year very closely just because I'm a Kareem Hunt manager and an Odell Beckham manager. The tendencies of Baker Mayfield, the needs he has in terms of uh, avoiding sacks and taking negative plays, Austin Hooper is a fix to that. And when I – J.J. Zacharyson this morning tweeted out a graph of the teams with the highest tight end target tendencies in football. Cleveland is in the top – two or three he's going to 
mostly Hooper, some Harrison Bryant before it was Njoku. Mm -hmm. Njoku's gone. Hooper is somebody that I think I can put in my in my lineup and not get Zach Ertz and not get Dalton Schultz and not get empty zero points. It might not be spectacular. It probably won't be. But five for 57 at the tight end, if I don't want one of the main four, give it to me. Yeah, 10 targets is a ton for a tight end. I would go I, – I believe that I, I would probably put Tanyan first ahead of Hooper and then Hooper. Uh, the third option to me is Jimmy Grandpa. He's a thing. He's as good as any other option that you're going to find yeah. to grab a touchdown and 30 yards. I agree. Any other thoughts on the tight end position? We've got streaming quarterbacks and defenses we need to talk about. Uh, no, I just that Dalton Schultz, if you're curious, what do you do with it? You just hold Dalton Schultz for now. He gets to play Arizona, see what Andy Dalton does. You, you do not move on after one bad game. I agree with you in part because of what you brought up before the week. He actually had an injury. Right. He had some questions about whether he'd be active in that game, so there could have been a little bit of you know, the disruption with Dak and, and that. So defensive streaming options this week, where are you targeting? So if you're looking for players or teams that are widely available, uh, Miami. Miami. Miami gets to take on the New York Jets. That is just – it's a recipe for success. Uh, that that would be my absolute top streaming option. And then if you want to – like if you want to – Get down in that dumpster. The New York Giants will be taking on Washington, and Washington gives up tons and tons of sacks. I've and the the Giants are actually putting up a decent amount of pressure on opposing quarterbacks. So that would be my that, backup. That's thing. funny. I was curious which side, which side of which side the I ball want. Yeah. you yeah. want in that game. But you can honest, play Washington too. Absolutely. There, you you can play Washington. You can play the Giants. Daniel Fumble Jones. Yeah, I mean, who score? Let me ask you this: Who scores more real points in this game? The Giants. The defenses or the offenses? Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> because I'm not sure. Yeah, that's nasty. If for some reason New England's out there, because which they probably because of the bye week. Yeah, they could have been because of the bye week. If somebody needed to make like a roster sponsor. Yes. Uh, very, very important right now. So they could be out there. Uh, Arizona takes on Dallas, which is the Andy Dalton experience. I'm not that excited about that. The Andy Dalton Monday night streaming football. option is enticing, right? The bad defense inheriting, you know, what I, I said, 75% of, of Dak is my expectation, which would be great. Be a lot of fantasy. But then week one is prime time for America's team. Dalton has not had the best history of – Big moments, we'll say. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's talk quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. All right, I'm going to let Mike kick it off with his streaming quarterback candidate right. that should not be eligible because people should have rostered him, but they super have not. I think he may like, – has he been – he's either been a stream or a start of the week – now, for the first five weeks, it feels like. What's insane is that he will be, for the next five weeks as well, people refuse to pick him up and play him. Look, it's, it's Ryan Fitzpatrick, man. He gets to take on the New York Jets. I, I love it. He And he is widely available. He is getting it done. He is, he is playing with zero cares. There, there, is, there is not a worry for in the, the world. For the fifth year in a row. There's not a worry <laughs> in the world for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, Tua is there. He knows that Tua is the future of the Miami Dolphins. It doesn't matter. He has he doesn't need to look over his shoulder. Eventually, it's going to happen. But in the meantime, he's just going to keep balling out yeah. and putting up top 12 performances. He's got Devontae Parker and Mike Gesicki and Preston Williams. That's all he needs. And, and Miles Gaskin. Oh, the I mean, gas man. He's, he, he's set up. Here's his last four weeks. Quarterback 11, quarterback 6, quarterback 10, quarterback 2. Also known as four, the, all top 12 performances. Man, and man, if the Lamar Jackson managers had Ryan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> I mean, it's also just so much fun yeah. to watch and root for Fitzpatrick. He's so often, joyful. Oftentimes infuriating because he sure. will throw the picks and he'll look bad sometimes, but he'll get it back. I and love he it. Runs. He runs. He doesn't care if he – he doesn't worry about getting hurt when he runs. No. He's nothing to lose, man. What's the I'm, worst that can happen? You retire? <laughs> yeah, I've never seen him slide. He, he's, it's it, in his contract. He I've, has to he, go head his first. His slide is always head first. Um. My start of the week is uh, weirdly Your stream. my stream, stream of the week for next week, even though that's not his next game, 
is weirdly playing tonight. Ryan Tannehill, uh, I think against Houston, I expect that to be a high-scoring game next week. Hopefully he has some of his wide receiving options back next week in uh, Adam Humphreys or Corey Davis. But the matchup is good. Tannehill has been really great since he's been the starter of Tennessee. He should be available most places because you haven't been able to play any Titans sure. lately. I'm going with Kirk Cousins against Atlanta. Yep. Uh, reason number one, Atlanta. Yep. Reason number two, is Dalvin that, Cook is out. And oh, you've I, got thought just, you were, I thought we were going reason number two is still Atlanta. That is, that's fair. Uh, but Justin Jefferson and Thielen, the ceiling has been raised by Jefferson for Kirk Cousins the way that Claypool may raise it for Big Ben. So I'm going to go with Cousins this week as a streaming option, only rostered in 16% of leagues. Um, so, yeah. I do want to also – like. If you had Dak and maybe things are tough for you, along with Ryan Tannehill, Matthew Stafford is coming back off of the bye week. Matthew Stafford has not been the quarterback that he was last year, but Jacksonville, Atlanta, if you're trying to get ahead of it and it's uh, you're in quarterback trouble, I think he's a player you should look at too. And we should talk, since this is a waiver show, a little bit more about Andy Dalton and his rest yeah, of, of season okay. prognosis, because you've got a, a matchup here against Arizona that could be, it could be really good for fantasy for him. Uh, Chandler Jones is not going to be there. The pass rush shouldn't be, like, on paper, things look good for Andy Dalton this week, and I think if you want to pick him up and play him, that's fine. I have just kind of a, a fear of that narrative street of Andy Dalton in primetime games, but I think it's okay. But if you look at the rest of season, he is nice. He is a starting quarterback with a great wide receiving core, a terrible defense and a phenomenal schedule. I would, you know, you know, if I'm, if I'm really been struggling at quarterback or I've had Dak and I've been fine at quarterback and, and now all of a sudden I'm, I, I haven't been in the streaming mood. I would be absolutely willing to, get Andy Dalton even over to these other streaming options just to see and put him in my lineup because you might have someone you could play week in and week out the rest of the way. I agree. All right, let's do a couple mailbag questions. Ooh. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. If you have a question for the show, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. All right. Nicholas in Massachusetts, should I trade Kenyon Drake for Darren Waller? Yes. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, probably. I I love this because it's hard to trade Kenyon Drake. I, I think you should hold on to Kenyon Drake. He's getting so much opportunity that fantasy points will come. But if I could trade him for a known commodity that's really a difference maker at a position, then yes, at, that's when you capitalize on him being a running back with volume. All right, Paul in Louisville with the trade question. Jamison Crowder for Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Jamison Crowder is just, he is hilarious. Because no one wants to play Jamison Crowder. You have zero confidence when you plug him in your lineup, and then you go, oh, top 24 wide receiver, sweet. <laughs> like, this is who Crowder is. Who else on the Jets is going to get those targets? It's going to be Jamison Crowder. So he is actually valuable. But if you need a running back, I'm willing to take the the shot here. I would trade for for Le'Veon Bell here. Yeah, I, I think if I'm picking between these two players, it's it's Le'Veon Bell. Obviously, they they both deal with the same uh, bad offense and bad head coach. But I do believe that wide receivers will get healthier, and Adam Gase will not last 16 games. I think that'll be good for Lev Bell. One can hope. One more trade question from Angel in Arkansas: Would I uh, trade Todd Gurley for Robert Woods? I'm willing to do it, uh, but look, running back is it is a bit of a mess right now. Todd Gurley is putting up points, albeit you know very touchdown dependent, very similar to uh, Antonio Gibson's production of recent, and the targets are not there for Todd Gurley. It is it's just running back attempts, which he's it's Todd Gurley right now is Kenyon Drake with touchdowns. Right. Yeah, he's getting the That's the the only difference between Kenny Drake and Todd Gurley right now is is he's scoring. five touchdowns. Yeah. I mean it, and that's a big difference for yeah. fantasy, but saying if if those touchdowns dry up, you're just as upset with Todd Gurley as you are with Kenny Drake. Right I agree. Now. All right, one more because we've been talking about the quarterbacks. Uh Aaron in Hawaii. A A Ron. A A Ron in Hawaii just lost the number 2 quarterback on the season. Fitzpatrick or Dalton, rest of season? ROS, you got to go Dalton. I agree with that. Yep. 
unfortunately. I'd like to say Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Yeah, because Miami wants to help out. But All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction. We got two new uh, studio set items. Brooks is now officially addicted to Pristine Auction. We've got a Josh Allen signed Nike football cleat. Whew. Yay! Which is excellent. Yeah, we got it for ninety three dollars, and then uh, Brooks picked up a sweet new Falcons Calvin Ridley signed jersey. Is it up on the wall? Yeah, it looks awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's great. Those jerseys are. I, I'm growing. They're growing on me. They're still winless. Um, fifty five dollars <laughs> and uh, thirty one cents. Use our code Ballers at pristineauction.com if you want to browse their sports memorabilia. That'll do it for us today. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Enjoy TuesdayNightFootball.com. That'll be fun. Josh Allen, 32 points, and I get to beat Mike again this week. Ugh. See you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. And Foot Clan, one more reminder from NHTSA. If you've ever uh, if you ever stopped at a railway crossing and the signals are flashing, you don't see the train or it looks like it's moving slow and maybe you think you should sneak across before it comes, think about this. Even if the engineer sees you right away and applies the emergency brakes, it can take a train a mile to stop. By that time, it's too late and the resulting crash will be deadly. Reminder, stop. Trains can't.